This video is all about setting up color controllers to make it easy to recolor animations in After Effects. There are three different levels of color controllers I'll go over. First, I'll show you how to set up a simple color controller so you can quickly and easily change the colors in a composition. Then we'll take it one step further so that you can create variations of your composition with different colors without affecting the original or having to duplicate comps. And finally, I'll show you how to make a master color controller so that you can change all the colors across multiple different compositions with just a few color pickers. Let's start by creating a color controller for this eyedropper icon animation. The first thing I'm going to do is go up to Layer, New, and then Null Object. Nulls are invisible layers, which makes them perfect for controllers. So first I'm just going to hit Enter and rename this. Now we need to get an expression controller that's a color picker. So I'm going to right click on this Null layer, go to Effect, Expression Controls, and then Color Control. You could also get to this from the effect menu here or from effects and presets, but I think this is the quickest way. So now it should pop up in your effect controls panel, which if you don't see this, you can find any panel that you need under window. And then also if you toggle down in the timeline, you'll see the same thing. I'm going to lock this panel in place so that it stays here because I'm going to be working with it a lot. I'm going to need multiple color controllers, so I'm going to rename them to stay organized. So with the color control selected, I'm just going to hit enter. And then let's just duplicate this color controller to create a new one. And let's rename this one. And let's do that one more time. All right, so I have three color controllers because I have three colors in my animation. The background color is obviously what's filling the whole background, but a lot of times it's used within the actual shapes. And then the fill color is going to be this color and the stroke color is the outlines of the icon. I'm going to change the colors of my controllers just so as we are working and setting this up, you can see things happening. I'm just going to copy and paste some hex codes to change these colors. Now that I've got my colors in my color controller, I need to connect the color properties of these layers that make up my icon to the color controllers. So since these are shape layers, they already have a color property, so this is going to be really easy. If you have illustrator layers or pre-comps, I'll show you how to work with those in just a second. So as a little shortcut, I'm going to type color into the search bar here to bring up all the color properties for all of the layers. So what I need to do is like for this first one, this is the drip, which is this, I'm going to take the little pick whip icon and drag it up to the color controller. You can drag it to either this color controller or the one up here. It doesn't matter. And now I just need to do the same thing for all of the other color properties. To make a panel full screen, you can just hit the tilde key and that way it's easier to see what you're doing. This layer is a mask and the color doesn't show up because the eyeball is off, so we don't need to worry about this one. And then just hit tilde again to make it back to your normal workspace. The background color is set in the composition settings right here. So what I could do to control the background color is to make a solid or a shape layer and put it in the background and then attach that color property to the background color property here. But I'm going to bring this composition into another composition so I don't want a solid background. So I'm just going to leave this as is for now. Alright, so now our icon is all colored in in the different colors set by the color controller. If I were to go in and change any of these colors, you can see that it's updating in the icon. If you're working with layers from Adobe Illustrator, you don't automatically have a color property. So here's what we can do instead. If your layer has multiple different colors in it, like this, what you're going to need to do is right click on the layer, go to create, and then create shapes from vector layer. Now it'll make these into shape layers, and you can go in and find all of the different color properties. And then you can connect these to your controller. Or another option is if you have shapes that are all one color, like this little dot, what you can do is use the fill effect. So if you just go over to effects and presets and search for fill, and then just drag the fill effect onto that layer, you can see it's recolored it and added this fill effect. And now you can connect this color property to your controller. If you need to add a color controller on a composition that's all one color, like in this example, what you can do is just use the fill effect. So I've already done that on all of these. So you can see I just added the fill effect 
and attach that to the color controller. So now this color controller is recoloring all of these different pre-compositions. Now let's say that I want to create a composition with a bunch of these different eyedropper animations, but I want to have each one be a different color. So let's look at how we can do that. The most obvious way to do this would just be to duplicate this composition and then create a second version with different colors. But I'm going to show you a better way to do this. So I'm going to undo this by just deleting this composition. And let's go back into our original. I'm just going to hit U to close up all of the layers. And then I'm going to toggle down to see these color controllers. Now what I'm going to do is right click in any empty space in the timeline or the composition viewer and go to open in essential graphics. So it's going to open up the essential graphics panel, which you can also get to underneath window, but I like to do it this way because it opens up my composition that I have open already right here in essential graphics. So it's a little bit of a shortcut. Now what I need to do is take these colors. So next to the stopwatch, I'm going to drag this color up into the essential graphics panel. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the fill and the background. So I've got my three color controllers in essential graphics. And now when I go over to the composition that has these compositions inside of it, these are all the same composition. And now they have this essential properties that I can toggle down. And here are my different colors for the color controller. So I can change these colors to create different versions. The background color isn't actually doing anything here, but in some of my other icons that you'll see later in this video, I do have to use the background color controller. So that's why I set it up now. So now I could go through and change the colors with essential properties. So I have different colored versions of the same composition without duplicating it or without editing the original. Now let's look at how we can create a master controller to control the colors across all of these different compositions with just one controller. I've already set up a color controller on this eyedropper. So I just need to do the same thing on all of the other animated icons first. So I'm just going to copy this null, command C, and then go back and let's choose the next one. So these color swatches, and then I'll just paste that null in here. And then I'm going to search for a color in the search bar to bring up all of the color properties. And now I just need to parent all the color properties to the appropriate color controller. If you have a lot of different color properties, it might be faster to just copy an already connected color. So like here's my stroke color, the darkest one. I'm just going to copy this by hitting Command or Control C, and then I'm just going to paste that on all of the other ones that need to also be linked to that same color. So I'm just looking for all the dark ones. I'm selecting multiple by holding down Command, and then I'm just going to hit Command V to paste, and now it's going to paste that color that's attached to this color controller. So it looks like I missed some up here. All right, so in our icon, you can see that that's already starting to work. So you can either parent by dragging the pick whip or by copying a color that's already connected the way that you want it to, and then pasting that onto all of the other ones that you want to be connected in that same way. And then just double check to make sure that what you've colored is looking the way that you want it. So I have to fix a couple things on here. All right, so now this color controller is all set up, but now I need to connect it to essential graphics. So I'm going to right click, go to open in essential graphics, and then let's toggle down to find these color controllers and just drag these in. And now if we go back to our composition with all of the different compositions in it, you can see that now the color swatches has those color swatches. So now I'm going to go and repeat that process of creating a color controller and setting up essential properties for all of these other icons. Here I have this composition that's a little burst, but it's all one color. And I want that to be colored with this color controller in this comp. So what I can do is just add a fill color to this. So I'm going to go into effects and presets and search for fill. And then I'm going to drag this fill color onto the pre-comp 
And then I'm going to take this color, so this fill color, and I'm going to attach it to this stroke color. Now that I've got all the color controllers set up inside of each of these different compositions, now I can make a master color controller. So I'm just going to go in and grab this same color controller, Command C to copy, Command V to paste. Just because it's already all set up with different color controllers, I could create a new one, it doesn't really matter. I can close Essential Graphics because we don't need that anymore. So now I have these same color controllers, and let's just pick new colors so that you can see how this is working. All right, so now I've picked some new colors. I'm also just gonna rename this master color controller so I know that it's gonna control everything. And now we just need to connect all of the essential graphics or essential properties from these different compositions to this master controller. So the stroke color will go to the stroke color, fill color to the fill color, and background color to the background color. All right, so you can see that that is all working. One more thing I'm gonna do is take this solid shape in the background and go in and find its fill color. And let's just parent that to the background color. All right, so that's how you can create a master color controller. If I go into the master color controller and change any of these colors, it'll update across all of the different compositions. In this video, we use expression controls to set up color controls, but you can also do the same thing with shape layers. In this example, I have these three little boxes here that are kind of like color swatches, and it's just a shape layer that I've made a guide layer by right-clicking and checking guide layer. So when I put it into another composition, this layer doesn't show up. Using a shape layer as a color control works in exactly the same way as what I showed you earlier when we use expression controls. So you would just want to parent all of the different elements colors to the colors of the fill of your shapes. Using a shape layer as a color controller can be nice because then you have these little visual swatches of your colors right in your composition. And you can double click on the shape and use a tool like motion to just change the color without having to go into the layer and toggle down a bunch of things.